In this video, I'll be breaking down how much you need to make in order to afford a 2023 BMW M340i. I think you should really consider following one of these rules in order to avoid making a huge car buying mistake. I've had a couple of friends that overextended themselves, bought cars they couldn't afford, and now financially they're a little bit behind. Uh, so my whole intention of creating this channel is to make sure that you're making a smart financial decision when buying a car. I've also got a link down there to a free auto insurance quote where you could save up to about 600 bucks a year. That's in the description, but more on that later. There are four options I'll be going over today. You can decide on which one suits you the best depending on how into cars you are. There are some people that just want a reliable form of transportation, get them from point A to point B, and there's a rule for that. And there are some that are willing to sacrifice a little bit more in order to get a car that they really want, which is a little bit more expensive typically, and there's another rule for that one. Stick around to the end of the video, find out what method would be best for you. This is 4 Wheel Finance, a channel dedicated to helping you making smart car buying decisions. Before I dive into the first rule, these videos take quite a lot of time and effort to make, so please click the like and subscribe button, comment down below what other vehicles that you would like me to review. First rule I'll jump into here is the 2410 rule, and this states that you must put at least 20% down on the car, should not finance it for more than 4 years or 48 months, and the payment can't be more than 10% of your monthly gross income. Since the 2023 BMW M340i has an MSRP of around $54,850, you'd need to put down at least $10,970. And with the average new vehicle interest rate of about 3.86% with a 48-month term, this would bring your monthly payment to $988.02. Gotta take note here, you're also paying about $3,500 in interest here. But if you were to extend that term out past 48 months, that interest would go up a little bit higher. Bank rate states that the average monthly insurance cost is $148, but this really varies greatly depending on your age, your gender, your driving habits, your driving history, what part of the country you live in, etc. So use that smart financial link in the description down below. It's the first one, and it's a complete free insurance quote. See if you can save a little bit of money. This brings your monthly total to $1,136.02. Going back to that 2410 rule, given your monthly cost would be $1,136. You need a monthly gross income of $11,360.20 or an annual gross income of $136,322.40. I really encourage you to take a look at the opportunity cost. You're putting a lot of money on something that's going down in value. If you were to buy a cheaper five dollars or $10,000 car and put what would be your car payment of $988.02 in the market instead, over the course of five years and a conservative 6% rate of return, this would turn into $68,987.52, gaining almost $10,000 in interest in just five years. Take a look at those Acorns and M1's finance links in the description down there. It's super easy to get started. You can start with just pennies, and I encourage you to get started as early as you possibly can. And this is just for the first five years for investing. If you were to continue for 10 years, it would amount to $161,380. And this is just for the first five years. If you would continue on for 10 years, it would amount to $161,308. Again, just at that 6% rate of return, which is pretty conservative. Typically, it's like 10% a year, so 6%, pretty conservative. This next role is my own. For my role, you need to have at least a six-month emergency fund, invest 15% of your gross income into your 401k, and max out both your Roth IRA and your HSA if you really want to be a rock star. And I know it sounds like a ton of saving, and it kind of is, but I don't give you a monthly percentage rule that you have to stick to. I wanted to set up this rule to make sure that your basis is covered in terms of your finances with your emergency fund, your investing, your saving, and then I'm not going to tell you how to spend the rest of that money. It's up to you. If you want to spend it on a car, on car parts, if you want to go out to eat more, if you want to go on vacations and travel, it's up to you. My goal here is just to make sure that your saving and investing portion is covered. There's a lot of people that kind of look at that saving. They're like, well, nothing's guaranteed. You should live the, your life how you want to now. And that's true. Nothing's guaranteed. But you can't really put a value on having peace of mind for yourself or your future. The next rule here is the Dave Ramsey rule. You've probably heard of Dave Ramsey before, and he thinks that you need to have a three to six month emergency fund. The vehicle shouldn't be more than 50% of your annual gross income, and you should purchase it in cash. Given that the 2023 BMW M340i starts at $54,850, 
your annual gross income would need to be a minimum of $109,700. And ideally, it's nice to purchase a car in cash. A couple of perks to that, as in you wouldn't have to pay that interest there of about $3,000, and your insurance would be a little bit lower. But not everybody has fifty-five grand in cash that you can put towards a car, and that extra money may do you better if it's in the market instead. The final rule is the one-tenth rule, which is developed by Financial Samurai, personally one that I think the majority of people trying to build their wealth should consider. It really doesn't allow you to purchase a new car, but it allows you to spend responsibly, reduce your financial car ownership stress, which increases your net worth over time because since you're putting so little money into a car, you've got a lot more free money to put in assets or opportunities that go up in value. It's a very straightforward rule. It says you shouldn't spend more than 10% of your gross annual income on a car. It can be new or old. Obviously, for the vast majority of people, it's probably going to be used. And you must own it for at least five years, but ideally more. And the theory here is to minimize your financial stress, free up some money to invest in assets or opportunities that may come your way. It's a lot more stressful and difficult making life decisions when you're worried about payments each and every month. Once again, this is 4 Wheel Finance. If you've got any questions regarding car buying or how much of a car you can afford, please leave them in the comments down below, along with any other vehicles that you would like me to review. And don't forget those investing apps. Get started as early as you can. And if you want to save a little bit of money on your car insurance, just give a look at that Smart Financial. They shop around, find some of the nation's top competitors for your situation, see if they can get you a deal.